nominate for me one thing, just one thing, that Christianity has introduced that doesn't have some source, some parallel, some analogy in, in previous and in other civilizations. Do you accept that challenge? Absolutely. I think the, um, the, the ideal of, of lifelong uh, matrimony, I think that's a, a very distinctive Christian concept. I think the, the category of, of what by the 19th century is coming to be categorized as, as homosexuality and heterosexuality, I think they have no precedence. I think the notion of secularism, the idea of there being religions, I think all these are entirely exclusive to uh, Christian civilization. I think the concept of science as it emerges in the 19th century, I think is entirely exclusive to, uh, to, to, to Christian civilization. I think the idea that um, human beings are created in the image of God, that is obviously something that Christians share with uh, with Jews. But that is a, a um, it, it, it gives a degree of dignity to human beings that no other cultural tradition that I'm aware of even remotely approximates to. Mm. So I think that all of those well, are, are and essentially what I'm talking in, in, in giving that is I am talking about what makes Western civilization distinctive. And one of the things that absolutely makes Western civilization distinctive and it's an inheritance of its Christian past is its assumption that its values are universal. This has been fundamental to the way that Christians have understood their faith, that, that it is for all of humanity. And to this day, the heirs of that cultural tradition want to believe that their values are not contingent, but somehow are the property of all humanity. Christianity has so saturated everything that everybody in the West does that essentially it, it's the water inside the goldfish bowl in which we as goldfish are all swimming. When um, Christianity is put in the dock and condemned for being um, patriarchal or hegemonic or oppressive or Spanish Inquisition or Crusades or whatever. I mean, right. I'm sure you will be yeah. familiar with the brickbacks that get thrown at it. Mm. That um, the standards by which they, the church is being judged and found wanting are themselves deeply Christian. Cicero's great contemporary Caesar is by some accounts, slaughtering a million Gauls and enslaving another million in the cause of, of boosting his political career. And far from feeling in any way embarrassed about this, he's kind of promoting it. And yeah. so when he holds his triumph, people are going through the streets of Rome carrying billboards, boasting about how many people he's killed. I'm clearly not, as I'd vaguely imagined, the heir <laughs> of the Greeks and the Romans in any way, really. And and so where am I coming from? And it was like a kind of itch, you know, you get right. on your back and you, yeah, think, yeah. you can't find it. I began to realize that actually, Paul, although in, in in many ways he seems a much less familiar figure than Cicero, mm. the kind of you know urbane man with his property problems. <laughs> uh, you know, Paul never had any property; he just made made tents. But compacted into this very very small amount of writing was almost everything that explains the modern world. You know, concepts like international law, for instance. So the 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 the, the, the fact the ba you know concepts of human rights, all these kind of things. Ultimately, they don't go back to Greek philosophers. They don't go back to Roman imperialism. They, re they go back to Paul. Because the idea that you can make society better gets embedded in the fabric of, of what will become the, this kind of papal order that emerges and will become the civilization, first of medieval Christendom, then with the Reformation, then with the French Revolution, now with the 60s and its aftermath. The same impulses are reverberating out and out and out like the kind of ripples from a mighty earthquake. I, on the one hand, it bemuses me that, 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 that someone like Dawkins, brilliant evolutionary biologist who's, who's fathomed the mysteries of how things change over the course of time, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the level of geological time, how, how reluctant he seems to, to be to recognise that the same thing has happened, you know, in the dimension of human culture. You know, he's the guy who invented the concept of memes. I mean, he, you know, he should, it surprises me that he doesn't recognise how he himself is Christian in exactly the same way that Bishop Wilberforce in the great debate with Huxley denied being, a, denied being an ape. Um, but at the same time, I think there is, you know, there's a part of, of, of Dawkins which clearly recognises he is Christian. There was this kind of famous tweet that he put out, I think, a couple of years ago, where he was sitting in the cloisters of Winchester Cathedral listening to the bells. And he said, how, you know... How, 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 how much more charming it is to listen to church bells than to um, Allahu Akbar. 
And then he pauses, and you can hear him thinking on his phone as he's putting this, and there's a dash, and then he says, or is that just my cultural upbringing? And of course, of course it's his cultural upbringing. You know, yeah. he, he, he refers church bells to the Allahu Akbar because he comes from a Christian society. Yeah. And in exactly the same way, he thinks the things that he does because his assumptions are shaped by the conditioning of a millennium and more of Christian assumptions, ethics, morals, evolution, if you will. Could we, though, have generated some kind of universal human rights and that, that sort of stuff? Out but I don't see why you would. Materials. Right. Why would you? I mean, right. the, the idea of human rights, mm -hmm. I mean, the idea that human rights kind of hangs in the ether, waiting mm -hmm. to be discovered, right. is, is as theological as believing that the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ rose from the dead and sits at the hand of God the Father. Yes. I mean, it's, 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 yes. it's, it requires a leap of faith. Yeah. I think that the doctrine of original sin stands as, as revealed as something that is profoundly democratic. Because if we're all sinners, then we're all at fault. And you can tell other people, uh, t you know, to take, to take the beam out of their eye, but you should be aware of the fact that you have a moat in your eye as well. Um, and if you don't have that, yeah, yeah, right. and if you don't have that, yeah. then, then, um, then you feel all the more qualified to sit in judgment on, on, on those who you feel have, have failed to, to, to kind of emancipate themselves from sin. And in a way, you then become the you know the the um, the the anti theist stereotype of of a kind of persecuting, judgmental um, person who refuses to accept that the the person you're sitting in judgment with that that, that you are you are you know you you are bred of the set of the common stock of humanity. We're all in that sense, you know, in Augustinian terms, we all we all share in the same sin. We all share in the same fall enshrined at the heart of every Western society in the wake of the war mm. is the utter conviction that racism is the ultimate evil mm. and that the, the, the weak should be careful so there should be welfare states mm. and these have become the the um, absolute foundations of the way that governments function mm. and universities function and opinion formers function and the the worst insult that you can give anyone is to say they're a racist or a Nazi. Sure. Yeah. The risk with that, which I think we're slightly seeing now, is that what do you do when people turn around and say, yeah, okay, I'm a racist, or yeah, I'm a Nazi, or I, I don't want to let refugees in, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What resources then do you have to yeah. make this case uh, beyond kind of screaming racist? Yes. And that, I think, is when you start to realise just how rooted in deeply Christian assumptions these arguments actually are. Yeah. I have lost my faith as, uh, you know, as, a, as a liberal. I've lost my faith. I don't really believe in it. Um, but in my gut, I still do. I, I, I have no objective reason for thinking that anything that I thought is liberal is true. I, I, I you know... I don't believe that human rights objectively exist or anything like that. I, I don't objectively think that there's anything in the arc of history that suggests that um, the strong won't crush the, the weak, um, that, that powerful states won't enslave parts of the population that they want to enslave. I now understand where my beliefs and values came from, that, that rather than just drown completely beneath a kind of despair, um, I, I can cling to stories. And I think that ultimately, um, the, the, the power of Christianity is expressed most potently through its stories. And those stories are not just in the New Testament, but, but in what Christians call the Old Testament as well. And those stories don't have to be literally true so the exodus doesn't have to be literally true for the story itself in my opinion to be true so i think that stories how certain stories have such a power that you can surrender to them and a sense so essentially that's that's what i feel that i'm doing is that i have I've surrendered to the truth of the stories and therefore of the the kind of the poetry and the mythology that they express. And I'm happy to identify myself with the truth of those stories and to see them as true. 
what, what if someone would say to you, okay, we don't go with Nietzsche, but there's a third option, isn't there? We don't, we don't need to go for the pale Galilean either. Well, is that, that is the course that, that, by and large, the West has taken. Mm. I mean, it has mm. taken the course of saying, um, w you know, we'll, we'll take over Christian morals and ethics, thank you very much, mm -hmm. but we're not actually going to bother with any of the mumbo-jumbo that requires us to go to church. Mm -hmm. um, th the question that is posed by that, of course, is whether you can continue to have the bloom if the roots have been pulled up, and we don't know the answer to that.